welcome to another exciting educational video about screen printing by Catspit Productions. All right, so today is another special video, special, special. I thought we would take a quick look at printing tote bags, okay? And tote bags are pretty simple to do. It's very easy. There's just a couple of considerations, so I figured we would just look at that really quick and uh, maybe print a couple just for fun. So, before I go on, I just want to remind you that if you like my videos, if you like what you see here on YouTube, you enjoy the information, the content, use it, you like it, please subscribe. I really appreciate that, and it helps me keep producing these videos for free right here on YouTube. So make sure to subscribe today, right now. Here is a little checklist before we start, okay? First of all, you're gonna need a small pallet, most likely a youth pallet of some kind, and ideally with a small bracket, okay? So small pallet, small bracket, and we're going to use this to put the tote bags on because tote bags can come in various sizes, but some of them are small, and the smaller the pallet is, it'll be a little bit easier for us to get some of these totes on, and I have a couple of ones, uh, a couple of ones, I have a few to show you today. Okay, so, but not only the small palette, right, but your artwork. Don't forget that your artwork is going to have to be sized properly for tote bags, and it's a very, 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 very good idea to get the tote bag in so you can size up your palette and size up your artwork and make sure that you're going to be able to pull everything off, okay? And, you know, Tote bags can come in a huge variety of shapes and sizes, so that's why it's very important to get one in before you, you know, try to print the job, uh, before you promise it on a deadline, make sure you have the appropriate palette, you have the artwork set up, and the special screen. We're going to need to set up a special screen for this because instead of putting the t-shirt art the way we do normally on, on a 20 by 24 manual screen, we're going to actually flip it around, almost like... Um, like you're doing sleeves or hats or other things, okay? So here, here's a couple different size tote bags. Here's a really small one, which is going to be a pain to get on the pallet. You know, here's an easier one. All right, so we're going to print these. These are all like uh, cotton or cotton poly blends or whatever they are. I'm using standard plastisol inks here, and we're going to use a gray to go down on black with the uh, traditional Cat Spit Secret Society logo. By the way, you can get one of these t-shirts at catspitscreenprintsupply.com. All right, so there's a few things to consider here. First of which is the artwork size and the placement on the screen, okay? And I think you remember this palette from the last video I did, which um, I did earlier today, actually. Uh, it's a little warm today, so I had to cool the shop down a little. But we got it on here pretty straight. Looks pretty good. I didn't have to fix anything, all right? Okay, so, all right, so listen, here's the thing. T-shirts, we normally want the artwork like this, yes? Well, for a tote bag, we're going to want it like this. That means you can't really use a regular T-shirt screen for this unless, for some reason, miraculously, it's in the right spot that you could for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it's in the center of the screen in the sweet spot and you can get it on there in such a way that it works. That's fine. But if you can't, you're going to have to make a new screen and we're going to it's the same way as we make any other screen except instead of the artwork this way, the artwork is going to be this way. Okay? And it's going to be towards you know the end of the screen. You see what's going on here? All right, and I'm using this blank screen here so that you can see what I'm doing. And so I want to give myself a little room with the squeegee to work. So I would maybe have it kind of like this. So I kind of would have it in the similar spot that I would for t-shirts if I were going to print them. But I flipped it around. So I have enough room to stroke. Okay, and it's going to be around somewhere around in this position. Okay, so... That's the first thing that you got to consider, okay? That's very important, making sure that you have a screen with the correct artwork size and positioning in order to print tote bags. Okay, now the other thing that you have to consider that I mentioned 
is the tote bag itself. Okay, and these things can be difficult. Look at this tote bag that is very small. Let me see if I can put this on here. Okay, you have to consider how difficult it's going to be, and that's why I mentioned the small pallet bracket in the last video and in this one, because this is a good pallet for this, but the pallet bracket is a little big. So getting this tote bag on the pallet is going to be a little bit harder. So it's fine if you have like 15 of them, might not be a big deal. But what if the customer orders 100 and it takes you a little bit of wiggling to get this thing on here? And then, you know, it's not really pulling up in a nice spot where you can get the seam on the edge and make sure everything's straight or, or uh, who knows, maybe you want to have it a little bit, maybe you need a smaller pallet, you know, I don't know, but this is what you got to consider. So this bag here could be difficult to load, all right? Then a similar type bag, you know, but maybe it's wider, but it's got this pleated, you know, kind of bottom. Well, it's the same kind of load, but here, again, you're going to have to be careful that you don't print on the bottom of the bag here okay so you can line up the crease if you like or you can actually use a lot of the times I use the top of the bag if I need to do it like this because it's it's good the, you know wherever we want this print which we can kind of eyeball with a piece of film wherever we want this print we can decide where this is landing and you're gonna have to be able to put the tote bag in the exact same spot every time well you know not the exact same spot. We're not, we're not building a rocket here, are we? But close enough. In other words, there's going to be a little bit of fluctuation from bag to bag. It won't be precision, but you get the point. You have to be able to load the tote bag, you know, the same each time. So the print lands in relatively the same spot. So here's a different kind of tote bag. It's a lot thinner. These are very common. Freebies. A lot of freebies will use these guys, you know, and this is like, uh, it's, it's a, I think this one's a uh, poly cotton blend. I think the other two ones are, you know, canvas. They're 100%, 100% cotton canvas. The other first two were. This one here, I think, is a poly cotton blend, as I recall. And there you go. So this one's a little bit flimsier. It doesn't have as much shape. Could be a little bit trickier to load. See how it's all creased from, you know, so you got to be able to load these kinds of things so that you know that your print is going to be straight, especially like the print we're doing today that has some straight text. That will be visibly noticeable if it's crooked. Okay, so there we go. So let me make the screen and then we'll uh, print some tote bags, shall we? All right, so I have the screen made now, so let's get set up. This should be fairly easy to do, and what I'm going to do is I will print just one side of each of these three tote bags, um, and then we'll just pull them off wet. I'll set them aside, and then we'll, I'll flash cure them and whatnot, and then we'll look at them and blah, 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 and later I'll print the other side because ideally, you know, there's two sides, so for a tote bag, you could print both sides. So I will print both sides, but for demonstrative purposes, we'll just do one side. Okay, so here we go, a little spray tack, always, right? Gotta have some spray tack. All right, the first tote bag going down is this really tight one. So now that we have spray tack on here, this is gonna be much more difficult. And I also have, by the way, I have the screen set up. It's already set up, it's ready to go, it's in an, a, an approximate position, and I did a test print to get the ink flowing through the mesh. So now I'm just trying to load this tight, very tight one, which is a bummer to load. Okay, so it's something like this. We'll, we'll press it down to the spray tack and now I'm just going to take a look to see eyeball it have a look see if you will okay and we've got some good off contact so I probably can pull off a good print you know without any flashing or anything so let's see okay flood off 
flood off pallet. Set. Looks like it came out of the mesh pretty easily. Take a look. Okay, looks um, actually pretty good. I think uh, because it's a canvas texture, has a little bit of texture, I'm going to hit it one more time just to fill in some small spaces. But looks like it's printing very nicely. And we're not going to take a lot of ink for this, just a little bit. And hopefully that stroke, perfect, that should be fine. Alright, so I'm just going to pull this off, which is very dangerous. <laughs> Taking a tote bag off the pallet while it's wet can be challenging because if you goof up, you know what happens, right? It gets ruined. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside. Alright, the next tote bag, we still got a little tack left, that's good. Next tote bag. You know, and basically I can eyeball each one of these to see where we're at. And this one here is the one with the pleated bottom, if you remember, or, you know, folded tight bottom that opens up when you fill it. Okay, so that one, we want to make sure it's not too high. I'm using, I'm just eyeballing it today. I'm using this line up with the square palette. That's kind of like why I really like square palettes. Let me see where this is falling. Okay. So what I want to do is bring this up a little, and it's not going to print the bottom, I don't think. <laughs> okay, so look, it looks good. Sometimes, you know, this would be like when you're setting up. Hopefully you would have a few of these to do, and you're not going to do this every time. So somewhere about there is okay. It's not critical. This is a, a test print a demo for y'all. Alright, again, I'll flood in the air, off pallet. Okay, let's see what happened. <gasps> Don't you hate when that happens? <gasps> okay, so no, this one's fine. Again, just the texture, a little bit of deep texture. So there's just some small spots that I want to fill in a little bit more ink, but the placement is uh, good, not bad. The challenge will be getting the print on the other side in relatively the same position since I'm not marking anything, right? <laughs> okay, so that's good. That looks good. Alright, we'll get this one off and we'll do the last one before I flash cure these so we can look at them. Okay. This is the poly cotton blend. I think we have enough spray tack yet. So this one goes on fairly easy. This one's a deeper bag. I have a little bit of room to the bottom. So I'm going to do this one more like this. You're always going to smooth it out and kind of iron it with your hands and the spray tack because even though there may be some wrinkles, you know, as long as you push it down like this and get it pretty firm and, and spray tack down it'll be fine so now let's check this one now this one has a smoother texture so it could behoove me it could behoove me <laughs> I like that it could behoove me to wipe down the back okay because it's a hang on because it's a different uh, texture and uh, it's it's you know, the print, I don't want any of the texture or anything from the other print to affect the print on here. I got some ink on my hand, I'm sorry. So, uh, I don't want it, you know, because this is so smooth. This is a lot smoother print surface than the canvas bag. So I just wiped it down just so that it would, you know, be its own print and not have any texture from that other one, okay? Alright, sorry I'm in the way there. Okay. So same thing. Flood in the air. This one should take the print easier, I would think. I don't know. Let's see. Not bad. I hit it again. And there we go. 
That's it. That's all there is to tote bags. This is the poly cotton blend. It looks pretty good. Not too bad for whipping it up on a demo video. Looks like a good print. Here's the first of the two canvas bags. This print turned out very good, but it is important to note that with textured tote bags, canvas tote bags, twill or whatever, you know, whatever type of tote bag it could be, because the texture could vary, the finish of the bag, the material of the bag can vary. Uh, so whatever it is, be careful that, you know, like here, I don't know if you can see that, but right around here, there's a little spot where, you know, part of the texture of the, the material, you know, I didn't get the ink in there, okay? So that can happen, and that's what I was hitting why I hit these twice, because you got to make sure that you're getting the ink into that texture a little bit, but it's still a very nice, crisp print. Let's look at the last canvas bag. Maybe we'll do a close-up on that one. This is the last of the three bags, tote bags, that I did. The second wide canvas tote bag. And actually, this tote bag has a bigger knit. It has much more texture. And maybe you noticed, I'm not sure if you could notice, but the print did sit on the fabrics here much differently on all three of these tote bags. So, you know, it could also be a good idea to do test prints to see that uh, what the print's going to look like and how much it's going to sit on the fabric, what the ink will do, you know, all that kind of jazz. It's always a good idea to do test prints when it's your first time doing any particular product. Okay, and this one here, you know, actually right in this same area, I'm wondering if there was something in my screen or what was going on there, but I, I don't know if you could see that. It's not as much on this one, but there was a little spot there that, you know, could have been tended to while it was on the palette. So, you know, you got to watch for those things. Make sure the texture is going to print well. I think you can see, despite the texture of the canvas, 100% cotton canvas tote bags, despite the texture, they print very well. And you may notice that, much like fleece, Plastisol ink likes to sit on top of fabrics like that, like fleece and 100% uh, cotton heavy knit tote bags that have a texture and, and aren't as absorbent. You know what I'm saying? They, this, this ink will sit a little bit more on top and give you some really uh, crisp, fine edges. Remember to cure the tote bags the same way you would for the type of ink that you're using, whether it be Plastisol or water-based. Make sure that you do your cure process the same, whether you use a flash cure or a belt dryer. In my case, I use Plastisol inks and I use a belt dryer, so these will have to go through the belt dryer later on, okay? And also remember that the lighter poly cotton tote bag will cure a little bit faster, perhaps a little bit easier than a heavier cotton canvas type tote bag. So the thicker, heavier material will take a little bit longer to cure, even in the belt oven. Okay, so like this one here was the heaviest, thickest material of all three of them. Uh, two of them were 100% cotton canvas. This one was one of those two, but this one's even heavier than the other one. So this one may take a little bit more heat than even that previous cotton one, okay? So make sure that you cure them because you might think, well, nobody will ever wash these, but it's a tote bag and some people use them for a long time and they might wash them. So you don't want them to come out or have any kind of wash problems on a tote bag, okay? All right, so that's it. Just remember to do that. Um, what else can we say about it? I think that's it, you know, if, uh, other than the cure. I think that's it. Remember to, uh, to always test. If this is new to you, do some testing before you start handing product out to your customer. That's always a good idea with any new product, all right? Thanks a lot for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And remember, if you like what you see, please rate thumbs up, leave a comment if you can, and most importantly, subscribe. And if you need any screen printing equipment or supplies, remember to check out catspitscreenprintsupply.com. Thanks a lot for your time and attention, and we'll see you next time.